Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all doing well. I've got something brand new to the market to show you in today's video. That is the Aquacast Texture by Elechem. This is a water activated casting compound. It is eco and on the pack there are detailed how to step by step instructions. The two main points you need to remember is that it is a five to one ratio. So one part water to five parts powder. The other thing to remember is that this is textured. So once it has cured and you've demolded, it is time to sand it back to reveal that texture. And you do need quite a coarse abrasive sanding pad around 40. I am going to be using 80 in this video. But yeah, I was so excited to have a play. Let's get going. Now, when it comes to ratio, it is a five to one, which means a 20 to 100. And I like that because I'm kind of lazy with maths. I always just double it or treble it depending on how much I want. And at this point, I really don't know how much I'm gonna need. So I am mixing 60 grams water to 300 grams powder. Luckily for me, that was bang on what I needed for the mold that I was using. Now, first up, we are going to be using the standard trinket tray mold that you have all seen a million times on my channel. But if you do have this mold in particular, then do know that 60 grams liquid to 300 grams powder is absolutely perfect. Now, if you accidentally go over on the, weigh on the weighing scales, you can just pinch some back out or use a pipette to get rid of some of that water. But the consistency is very much like a wet sand consistency it is beautiful i mixed it truly and totally you want to make sure that all of that powder is absolutely and totally soaked with that water so i just mixed until i felt like i had done enough mixing now this tray i do want to color it i it is valentine's day and yeah the instructions do say you can add color so i am going to be using the red from homeware design co but just two little drops I want a gorgeous pale pink color. And at this point it's giving strawberry ice cream vibes. And that is exactly what I was going for being a Valentine's series that we are currently in. Same with the color, you really wanna mix it in. If you don't want marble and you want it one block color, then make sure you mix that totally into your mixture. I decided it's a brand new product. I have never played with this before. Let's try marbling. So just two drops of that pigment, a little bit of a mix, and we are ready to pour. Here's the thing, I don't know if that marble is gonna stay there because we are actually going to be sanding the surface of this piece right off. So I still don't know at this point if that marble is gonna really do much. And as it sat, as I said earlier, 60 to 300 was bang on for this tray. If you have this trinket tray and you're fancy getting your hands on some of this, 60 to 30 was absolutely bang on. So I just did a shimmy and a shake and a tabity tap to try and reduce any air bubbles. I wasn't too concerned about air bubbles around the edges because we're sanding this down and that's kind of, <laughs> it allows you to make a couple of little air, air bubble mistakes because a lot of that won't be seen. Next up, we're gonna make this tray. I'm using exactly the same amount. So 60 to 300, because again, lazy maths, <laughs> lazy maths here. As it stands, it wasn't quite enough. I wanna make a black and white tray, not black and white, but black and natural. This is more of a sandy stone color, the natural color. So I do wanna add some black in there. So I'm gonna use the Buonite black pigment for this. And again, 60 to 300, it just was not enough to mix and fill up this tray. Hindsight is a wonderful thing, guys. I really should have just made a little bit more to fill it up. Same method again, making sure that that powder and that water are fully combined before you pour, just to make sure that you get the best out of it. It also says in the instructions that if you play around with those ratios, then you are not gonna get so much of a strong solid piece. So that ratio is really, really important. That one to five really should be followed to make sure that when you finally demold that your pieces are going to be as solid as they could ever possibly be. Now, 
here is where the black came in. I wanted to create some kind of, you know, abstract pattern here. So I just poured a little bit of the natural in the right and left hand side of the bowl, the plate, <laughs> the tray. And then I just added some black into the remainder. Now I didn't go to town with the black. I didn't kind of take my time to get a black black. At this point I thought, well, I've put enough in and again, this is new to me, so I'm just playing and I didn't want to put too much pigment in because I wasn't quite sure how it was going to work. So we do end up with a grey and a natural stone effect. Another shimmy and a shake to try and get rid of all of those bubbles and we are done. It is 30 minutes later and I am demolding. Now I'm saying a risky demold because the instructions actually say 60 to 90 minutes. Guys, please follow the instructions. Don't be like me. The reason you really should be following the instructions is because like most ecos, this is fragile at the point of demold. So if you don't allow it to do what it's gotta do for that amount of time, there is a risk that you could break it when you take it out of the mold. Here is the black and kind of, I keep saying black and white, but it's more of a natural stone color. Here is the results of that. I love it. It looks very abstract. It also looks like two faces looking at each other, kind of spookily. Also looks like a steering wheel. Okay, I'm actually gonna let these just sit for five minutes before I sand them back. Now, I would also say that sanding next day is probably preferable, but again, I'm sanding immediately. I wanna see what we get. First up is the tray. Now the instructions say to use a coarse abrasive pad. That means a low number. So anything from 40, 60, 80, 100, that really is gonna take the surface off really, really, really fast. Anything higher than that, you'll just take longer to sand. Now, I didn't have any wet dry sandpaper. What I did have was an 80 grit mesh orbital sanding disc, and that is what I'm using. So. It does also say wet sanding is preferable. Now I started dry sanding, but of course that's gonna kick up a lot of that dust. So I did decide to cut my um, mesh down into manageable chunks. And then I did decide to add water. After only 30 seconds of sanding, I thought this has to be done with water. Now, usually what I would do is I would sand with a container or a bucket of water. I would sand over it and just keep adding water, keep sanding, keep adding some fresh water. But because I am filming in my craft room, it's not so easy. So I am just using drops of water on my worktop here. Um, but in an ideal world, if you're doing this at home, I would definitely suggest getting a container with water in, getting a bucket with water in, sand your piece over that bucket, um, and it just makes it so much easier. Then wait a couple of days, allow whatever comes off to settle in the bottom of the bucket, pour the water down the drain in a sieve. I have done a whole video on how I clean up after using Ecos. But as soon as I started adding water, it was so much easier to sand. Like, <laughs> that's why we do it. Um, but it was so much easier to sand. There is nothing neat and tidy about this project. You are gonna get messy. It is gonna turn into a super thick paste. But again, if you're doing this over a bucket of water, you might not necessarily get this thick paste. It's just cause I am doing this in my craft room on my worktop. So yeah, I'm trying to just add a bit more water in there, making sure that I get into every single nook and cranny of this tray. The difference is, immediate. It only took one or two swipes of the 80 grit to reveal that stony, sandy, earthy texture. I love it. I love anything like this. I love anything that gives me the feeling of something being natural yet industrial, if that makes any sense. I absolutely love it. And this is right up my street, getting messy. I love it. it it's just therapeutic to me. I hate sanding. If you know me, I hate sanding. But this is different. This is just oh, satisfaction galore. Now I do end up taking this away and rinsing it in my bucket of water and look at this. This is beautiful. It is everything that you would expect from a textured eco. It's definitely feeling like a 
stony brick that's that's the only way I can describe it so you go from this smooth to this absolutely gorgeous textured surface after you've sanded I'll be honest I only sanded for around four to five minutes it really did not take long at all sanding with water and then with the tray I took it into the bathroom and I used a container of water it was so much easier but here are the results I will show you now. We've gone from this gorgeous smooth to this absolutely gorgeous textured surface. I'll be honest, I prefer the natural colour of this product and then I dropped it. <laughs> I dropped it. I actually dropped it into my bath, into the bucket. It bounced off the side and it shattered. Now bearing in mind I demolded after just 30 minutes. This is why we follow instructions. This is why we follow instructions. I demolded after 30 minutes and it hadn't actually filled the mold up. So it was super thin. I ended up creating a really thin tray. But look, this is what we've got. We've gone from that gorgeous shiny texture to the beautiful natural sandy texture that you get once you sand it down. Now, that crack was already in there, you would have seen that on the camera. You can, at this point, if you want to, keep going. So because this is still quite fragile, we're only talking 40 minutes after pouring at this point, which is way too early, but it's never the end. You never have to give up. Um, we can put this back in like other Ecos. You can just break it up even further if you wish. You could. It's almost like a giant, thick terrazzo. Um, so I'm going to just break it up into all of these pieces, put it back in the mould. The other half of the plate is still sitting on the side, so you could effectively get two plates from your one drop. <laughs> and then I'm filling the rest up with just the natural, just the natural aquacast texture. I'll be honest with you guys, um, I prefer, I love the natural colour of this. I think if I'd have had a few plays, which I don't usually do, I don't usually play, I usually go straight in, head first, see what it is, and then we kind of learn together. Um, if I'd have done colour first, I probably would have just done a natural, a natural effect video. The natural colour of this product is beautiful. It is everything you imagine a calming, neutral environment to be like if you're going down the neutral home decor scheme the natural um textured aquacast is everything it is everything the color sublime now i know for a fact these results are going to divide a nation half of the comments are going to love it half of you guys are going to hate it for me i love the random craziness of this tray. Now, granted, I could have sanded for another 30 minutes and actually brought out more of that black, but for me, this is a cross between the surface of the moon and a quarry, like a sandstone cliff where someone has gone in with their chisel and their hammer and they have hammered out sandstone that is literally thousands of years old. Like, I love this. This is about as rough, textured, random as you could possibly ever get in a tray. Now, you will have noticed when I poured in all of that extra aquacast texture, it lifted a lot of the smaller pieces in there. They were quite light. So it lifted a lot of that up. And what that did was it seeped mostly all underneath. Now, sanding this back, I thought there's no way. Like I've lost everything. But sanding it back, I could just keep going and reveal some more of that black. But I decided to quit here. I've got chunks. I've got these gorgeous big chunks. Almost holes as well. Straight from a sandstone cliff. I love this. Again, I know for a fact this is going to divide a nation. Some of you won't necessarily like it. 
some of you will see what I see and I see a completely unique plate never ever to be recreated. This is the results of trying this for the very first time and again the um, the actual instructions have since been revised. This has all happened in the last 24 to 48 hours. It is now advised to demold after two to three hours. So bear in mind I demolded after 30 minutes amazing results and of course because I dropped the plate it was super fragile at that point but look at this I just think it is otherworldly especially this chunk out of the side I carried on sanding just to see what effects we could get and we truly have got a sandstone quarry kind of result here I love them really enjoyed using them now the details for this product will be down below but please know I am not affiliated with Elechem I will not earn commission if you decide to go ahead and purchase this product I am just letting you know that I've tried it for the first time I love it I absolutely love it I especially love the random broken plate effect um did not expect it to come out that way but again first time using the product so upwards from here you can only learn from what you know and yeah I love it I hope you do too and thank you so much to Aram over at Elechem for letting me try this for the first time so excited I will see you all in the next video bye